put on your helmet and get ready to kick off five crazy, cool, epic, awesome, funny, weird, wild, unexpected, true <gasps> facts about the Super Bowl. Number five. The Super Bowl isn't just the biggest sporting event of the year, but the biggest TV event, too. The very first Super Bowl broadcast was only in English, but nowadays, the game is shown in more than 180 countries and in 30 different languages. Nine of the ten most-watched television programs in U.S. history were Super Bowls, with the only exception being the final episode of a famous TV show called M.A.S.H. Each year, over 100 million people tune in for the big game. After those staggering statistics, I bet you think the Super Bowl is the most watched sporting event in the world, right? Well, think again! The Champions League final takes the prize. That's a European soccer, or I mean football, match. But even so, the Super Bowl rakes in a ton of cash. Which brings us to our next fact. Number four. There's tons of money spent each year on the Super Bowl. A 30 second commercial for Super Bowl one back in 1967 cost about $40,000. But this year, that same amount of airtime will cost almost $5 million. And it's not just advertisers who have to fork up the dough. Back in 1967, a ticket to Super Bowl One cost fans just $10. This year, an average ticket costs over $5,000. And that number rises as you get closer to game day. Win or lose, the players will make some coin too. In 2016, the players on the winning team will earn a $102,000 bonus, and the players on the losing team will only earn $51,000. And rest assured, even the bench players making minimum wage will get a payday. It, wait, what's that? Minimum wage for an NFL player is $450,000? Oh man, gotta learn how to punt or something. Number three, there's no existing footage of the first Super Bowl. Considering how much goes into the Super Bowl nowadays, it's hard to believe how small the annual event was back then. There were more than 30 empty seats in the stadium, no pyrotechnics, no pageantry, and no halftime show featuring Katy Perry. In fact, it wasn't even the biggest sporting event happening that day. TV Guide recommended viewers actually watch the Harlem Globetrotters game instead, which was being played on an aircraft carrier. But the craziest part, the game wasn't considered important enough to even archive. See, back in those days, filming on tape was expensive. Like, extra scoop of guacamole at Chipotle expensive. So the tape was wiped clean and reused. According to NFL Films co-founder Steve Sable, if you can believe it, they recorded soap operas over the game tapes. Which is kind of like drawing over your parents' tax forms to make your own comic book. I'm sorry, Mom, but Mr. Infinity Man is the hero New York needs. Number two, Super Bowl Bling. You might know that each year the Vince Lombardi Trophy is awarded to the winning team, but did you know how much it's worth? The trophy, which stands over 20 inches tall, weighs 6.7 pounds and is valued at more than $25,000. It's made entirely out of sterling silver and is engraved with the names of the teams, date, location, and the game's final score. It's then sent back to the winning team for them to keep and smaller replicas are made for each player on the winning team. And you can't talk about the bling without talking about the rings. Each shiny piece of hardware costs about $5,000, which can fluctuate depending on the prices of diamonds and gold. Good thing it's so valuable, since it's not exactly fashionable. And finally, our number one fact about the Super Bowl, the halftime show. Halftime at the Super Bowl hasn't always been the biggest performance of the year. The first Super Bowl halftime show featured two college marching bands, guys flying around in jetpacks, a 200 voice chorus, 300 pigeons, and 10,000 balloons. And that's pretty cool, but not exactly the biggest rock concert of the year. However, the Super Bowl halftime show has been growing and growing ever since. In 1972, jazz legend Ella Fitzgerald became the first African-American woman to sing during the halftime show. In 1989, the halftime show featured magician Elvis Presto, who performed magic tricks in the Memphis style of Elvis Presley. But it was Michael Jackson's 1993 halftime performance that changed the game for good. It was the first time ratings actually went up during halftime, which ushered in our modern era of over-the-top crazy halftime shows. So yes, you can thank Michael Jackson for bringing us all Left Shark. And there they are, 
are. Five totally super, totally true facts about the Super Bowl. Who do you think is going to win the big game this year? Let us know by leaving a comment, and then be sure to check out Five Facts About Doritos if you need a snack during the action. And remember to subscribe to DreamWorks TV for new videos every day and new Five Facts every Tuesday. When did we move? I'm your host, and I've got my pizza, my chips, and my guacamole ready, so Super Bowl commercials, here I come. Thank <laughs> you.